Hey there, Postal here. So today we are looking at the Seafang Tier 8 Premium British Multi-Role Plane. In fact, this plane, as far as since 2.0 has been out, is the oldest of the multi-roles that are in the game. Uh, for the UK, anyway, of course. Uh, before the rest of these particular planes came into existence, we had a Demon and the Skua. Um, but the Hurricane and Beyond were not in the game until a later time frame. Um, I remember when, when these first came out, and then obviously recently we've had the rest of the multi-roll lines. All very, very strong in their own regard. As you can see, I've kept the majority of them. I think the only reason I don't have the Hurricane one is because when the missions first came out, I was able to get the Hurricane two and just kind of went down the line from there. Um, but what are we looking at when we're looking at the Sea Fang here? Um, so it is basically a tier 8 premium version of the Tempest. And let me give you some details of why that is. There are some notable differences. Um, and we'll definitely go into details of that because it's not exactly a premium version of the Tempest. But it's pretty darn close. Um, we're looking at the, um, you know, the, the stats here of the plane. The guns are the same. Um, and these guns you'd be used to for the entirety of, of almost all the British planes in the game. You're using your, um, your standard 20 mil Hispanos. These are the tier 8 versions of them. They're going to be doing the 115 damage per second. You've got four of them. So that's going to be getting you to um, 460 damage per second when you're firing all four of them. The biggest difference you're going to first notice between a Tempest and a Sea Fang is the bombs and rockets. So the Tempest actually has the ability to have eight rockets, while the Sea Fang here is going to have two. Um, two per wing, four total. Um, and I'm going to make an argument as to why in most, well not most, in certain situations you'd rather have the Sea Fang over the Tempest and why other certain situations you'd rather have the Tempest over the Sea Fang. A lot of it has to do with those rockets. Um, same survivability, airspeed, slightly higher on the Tempest, um, and that's even before I um, you know, did anything that boosted the airspeed, which I did do on the Sea Fang. Um, altitude perform. Oh, excuse me, jumped one, didn't I? Maneuverability is slightly better on the um, on the Sea Fang, but the actual turn time is the same. So you're not going to notice a huge difference in the two of them. Um, I think the maneuverability numbers are higher. I mean, must be because of the optimum airspeed and the stall speed are actually less on the Sea Fang. Uh, which you'd think with the bigger wings, the Tempest would have a, a lower stall speed. Anyway, um, and last but not least, definitely not least, something that I think um, another reason to separate the Sea Fang and the Tempest is the altitude performance. You'll notice a, um, a pretty decent difference in the maximum opti optimal altitude. The overall ceiling, um, service ceiling is basically the same. It's going to take you forever to get to 11,000 feet anyway, um, or 11,800 if you're in the Sea Fang. But really, the big difference is the optimal, and the reason being, you know, if you're at 5,200 feet, you've still got all your maneuverability. Whereas on this one, if you're at 5,200 feet, you lose a, a portion of that maneuverability. So you're going to notice that. What um, you know, what makes the Sea Fang stand out from the Tempest, besides it being a premium? Um, this plane, the the temp, the Sea Fang is, in my opinion, built more to do the dog fighting than the Sea Fang. I mean, than the Tempest would be. The Tempest has those extra rockets, and with the having double the amount of rockets, you actually have the ability to make an impact on um, flipping sectors. The Sea Fang really doesn't have that. You've got the four rockets, and they're kind of there for, well, I mean, they're there to assist but there you can't take a zone with these four rockets four rockets is enough to take out um, anti-aircraft and that's about it right um, some some lightly armored um, ground targets and because of that you'll notice 
I've got my um, service set up. It's not focused on this at all. In fact, it's focused to minimize these. So my outboard um, weapons, I'm helping the aerodynamics of it, and I'm, you know, it's it's an impact negatively to my bomb and rocket reload speed. But I don't care. I use my rockets in this particular plane uh, as supplemental at best. Most of the time, I'm using this particular plane to dogfight, almost like you would in a light fighter. Um, but the guns hit so hard um, that that's the biggest difference. I've got um, I, I actually so I don't have this plane specialized, but I use these two. Um, service items to kind of counteract each other. So here you'll notice the improved polish skin helps the cruise speed. But again, I'm trying to build up the speed on this particular plane a little bit. Hopefully if I do need to get into a decent altitude, I've got the speed to get up there and, and keep my momentum going. You'll notice that its negative is the aircraft maneuverability by a slight amount. To counteract that, I've got the improved lightweight power unit, which actually helps the maneuverability above and beyond the negative of the skin. Um, it does hurt the engine's resistance to critical damage, but this plane engine doesn't tend to be knocked out all that often. Uh, so the um, the maneuverability that I would have lost by getting the speed is actually more than um, cared for by the improved lightweight power unit. So I hope that makes sense. Otherwise, on my consumables, it's my standard uh, layout, for the most part, standard layout of the, um, the, the first aid kit, the emergency control system, and the engine cooling. I know, um, and probably when I get this specialized, I'll do pneumatic control assist. Um, I haven't, I don't feel like I need to have, um, I feel like this comes in more handy, I guess I'll just say that, than the pneumatic control assist on this particular plane but I can see the argument in using that. I always use universal ammunition and I recommend everybody always use universal ammunition even if you don't have a premium account it's worth whatever the cost is by just having a slightly better chance of causing fire or inflicting critical damage it's definitely worth that. So that's the setup that I have on this Seafang. It's one of the few um, tier 8 premiums that I've actually bought um, and I got this, it was on discount um, and it was right before the tier 7 through 10 um, multi-rolls came out and I knew that I liked the Hurricane 1, Hurricane 2, Hurricane and Hurricane 3, holy crap, and the Tornado which is a Hurricane 3 and I figured you know what let's let's get a C-Fang, let's test it out if it's anything like the tier 4, 5, and 6 I'm gonna be a happy camper and guess what I was a happy camper. One thing I really really like about this whole tech tree line is that for the most part, if you like one of these planes, you're gonna it just gets better and better and better. Tempest is a great plane, Typhoon, Tornado, they're all great planes, and the Sea uh, Fang fits right in there. You're not gonna feel like you're playing a plane that's all kinds of out of whack or completely um, different than what you've learned to fly. Um, and so, if you like the British multi-role line, uh, you're definitely gonna like this particular plane as well. Uh, that's enough uh, chit chat about the plane itself and why I've got it set up the way I've got it set up. Let's go ahead and take a look at some gameplay for this particular plane. So here we go. Got a tier A battle. This game was actually recorded late last night. I had a few good games in this uh, plane yesterday. Um, kind of decided which one I was going to use just based on the video gameplay and then as I was rendering the video realized the microphone setup was completely wrong couldn't hear me talking not that everybody would have minded that because it's my voice but anyway um, so <laughs> let's go to this particular battle so you're gonna notice the first thing I'm doing is utilizing my rockets to at least flip something and utilize them to take out the anti-aircraft and then get right onto the enemy planes. So first things first, we've got that guy knocked down. Uh, try, in this particular plane, you're gonna notice very often I use the air brakes. And the reason being is, especially versus box, you can put those air brakes into use and have a much tighter um, circle than you would if you were boosting or even going at your normal speed, um, just based on your airspeed. And one of the games that I played 
um, really was frustrated that I wasn't able to keep it because I was actually in a dogfight with this Spitfire 14. Um, not that I wanted to be, but I was able to utilize some techniques to actually outfight him, or at least live long enough until, uh, well, actually until the box came and saved me. Um, so, unfortunately, we can't see that. So, luckily with these new Russian bombers, they're pretty low altitude, and so I'm able to take advantage of them in this particular plane. Uh, although this plane has a higher altitude performance than a Tempest, it's still a relatively low altitude, uh, like all the multi rolls in this game. Uh, but the Russian bombers are nice enough to be lower. Uh, here I was just testing out my guns to see how long they took to actually overheat. So I felt like they were overheating, uh, but it was my fault for not. It was my fault for letting them get overheated uh, when I really needed them. So we're heading over to the garrison. Uh, reason being is the middle was already taken, and I wanted to go ahead and get this taken care of. There's a lot of enemies that have really good uh, maneuverability, and you know they're just going to be chilling at the center. And although this plan is very good at taking enemies down, not when there's a furball like that. So try to take advantage of them not paying attention to the garrison and get this flipped. So we we'll see some enemies coming in here, do a little flip maneuver. Usually that's about all you need to do, whether it's versus a human or versus a bot. Um, something like that can really throw them off and see how hard these things hit. And they do hit very hard. Unfortunately, I'm down to really low hit points. Well, I would like to get this gear so I hit it. And I don't even remember how this game went. This game was so late last night. I get up at 4 in the morning, Eastern Time. I was playing this at like 10 p.m. Eastern Time, um, and I was pissed because I had just, you know, wasted uh, oh my knuckles are loud. Uh, wasted a lot of time. And, yeah. All right, so I wasn't able to get that particular guy. Unfortunately, it was taken out by um, the defense aircraft here. But we do have the comm center. Um, looking at the map, what I've done here, probably going for the comm center considering all those bombers coming in, got those enemy aircraft coming in, um, and the Sea Fang is very, very good at defending. Um, the guns are incredibly strong. If you're used to Hispanos, you know how, how hard they can hit, and these definitely hit hard. It's Really, honestly, it's the uh, best thing about this particular plane. It really can melt down a lot of points. So we're going to see that here versus the bomber. The bombers have quite a lot of hit points. And if I can just add some trigger discipline, the bomber's dead pretty quickly there. Uh, things like 262, if they're silly enough to try to outmaneuver me, uh, those melt pretty quickly too. And and that's a reason why I have this particular plane set up for speed and some uh, a little bit of maneuverability. Maneuverability. I'm use my words. Uh, use our rockets here. Start trying to flip this back as we lost it. But at least we're here already. Got the defense aircraft, and we can definitely take them down. I'm using my air brakes here, so I can be slow enough, and this plane can't maneuver me. I could just kill it. It's a little bit too much time. Yeah, I remember this particular guy. For whatever reason, I wasn't able to actually keep my guns on target. So I'm flipping around here. Now, but knowing, or assuming, he's going to be dead pretty soon, I took my eyes off of him and go for something with some higher hit points. Get him taken care of. And let's go ahead the last one here. There we go. So, again, using the rockets just to get one of the AAs, I look at what AA needs to be gotten. Um, if there's a lot of bombers in my area, I'll take out the high altitude. If it's ground pounders and me, I will take out the low altitude AA. Um, but that 
helps me actually flip a Thompson. And then I was hoping to get this guy. And that Yak9 knew that 45 finally um, stung me. So, luckily, I wasn't in the sector. Um, and to be honest, the Yak9 is going to be right up there with my um, maneuverability. Just hoping to take him out quickly. So we're going to hop in the center here. And we, we've got quite a lot of options, right? We were able to hang on to the other comm center. We've got this comm center. And we've got the military base in the center here. Uh, sorry, the air base. And so right now I'm just trying to make sure that we don't lose too many um, sectors. The amount of points is about the same. And that's when I see that we've got this... Um, enemy heavy fighter. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with him. You know, the Key 93 is kind of derided as a um, low maneuverability heavy fighter, but it's still pretty maneuverable, um, especially for its tier. It's just not as maneuverable as the tier 5 and tier 6 before. So, in this particular instance, I wasn't quite sure where I was going to be going, trying to decide what was best, and then realizing wait a minute. I'm moving towards the spawn section. I'm not in a yak. I'm not in something that can just, you know, pivot on a dime. And it doesn't matter if something spawns right behind me. So I need to get away from that. Heading back to the center here. Taking a look at the most dangerous plane, in my opinion. At least this near me. I don't want something that can get behind me. So it happens to be in the direction I'm going. Let's go ahead and boost up here. Get this Russian bomber if we can. And, you know, this plane, like almost all multi-rolls, is a force multiplier. And so, you know, um, don't be afraid of helping a heavy or a light focus down another plane. We've got this ground pounder coming in here. I was thinking he was going to be turning in towards the center, and I could help kind of defend a little bit, but it looks like he's just going to the comm center. Well, I'm just going to stick with it. Squall lines in, so I definitely want to get rid of him. Uh, I'm able to. to and that way we don't have to worry about him flipping. Got some bombers coming in. I'm trying to keep an eye on the map. I'm really afraid we're going to lose in the middle as well. To be honest, it feels like I wish I could uh, clone me or a couple of me. Uh, so I want to go ahead and head to the center here, taking a look at the hit points of what I'm going against and seeing what might need to be taken care of. I also see that there's our ground pounder enemy on the side here. And nobody's focusing on him, so I definitely want to hit him. Get him knocked out, get some of our points back. And now we can move on to whatever may come. Uh, we've got three sections, but we're down on points. We really need to hang on to that comm center. And I'm waiting for my boost. And now my boost, my cooling, can come back on, and I'm going to utilize that to uh, get these bombers. I did realize there wasn't a lot of enemies left. I think there's only one, actually. Uh, but it, yep, but it, it's a heavy all the way down to the south. Um, I can't chase it down, so I thought my best bet was to try to defend this section and do what I can to try to hang on to it. Um, and continue to get four points for every one point they get. And again, in this situation, whatever the heavy plane is that's behind me is firing at, I'm firing as well. And I kept firing at this out of frustration. I was like, come on, I really flipped it. Um, but I wanted to utilize my guns with the friendly guns and be able to take out those bombers quickly. Uh, but lo and behold, the enemy heavy is in our general vicinity, so uh, unfortunately I'm at a boost, but it is what it is. So we're just kind of sitting here hoping to gain it back. I'm watching the map, seeing if there's a direction he's going, and I can kind of put him off for the patch. Uh, as soon as he starts turning, I know I'm golden, as long as I can get my guns to hit, and have some trigger discipline, and I knock him out. That's the last of the enemies. We were head on points anyway, um, but that just made me feel so much better. Yeah, I got a Koza dub, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, but let's head on back. Alright, and as we can see here, pretty good game. Um, not a grade one, 
but still was able to get 300,000 silver, 200,000 without a premium, um, and can hopefully show you the strengths of this particular plane. I wasn't quite sure how I would like it. I do like that it is right in line with the rest of the British multi rolls, um, but you can really see the strengths. Um, and I'm showing you why I have it set up the way I have it set up. I really think that this is. Um, it's not a dogfighting plane, but it's much better at taking out aircraft than it is at taking out the grounds. And so, yeah, obviously got myself a decent amount of silver. Um, all things considered, I think I start. I think I got two and a half million, maybe a little bit less than that. But really enjoyed this particular plane. All right, and so that is the tier eight premium. Um, British multi-role plane and so I really enjoy this plane if you like the British multi-rolls you're gonna really enjoy this particular plane do you need to go out and, and purchase it well that's debatable um, and it, I'm I strongly rec recommend everybody go for a vampire f1 you know, they're completely free as long as you've got the time and it does take a lot of time to do this unless you're gonna be putting a bunch of tokens on it um, and then there's always various events. I've got the BVP203 because I was able to win it in an event. I've got the ME109TL because I, I received a supply chest and was able to beat the missions and earn that. Um, obviously I've got some that weren't won. Um, this is one of them. I waited though until it was on discount. Um, I highly recommend waiting until there's some sort of discount week. Nobody should be hard up to get a tier 8 premium like now. Um, I would recommend waiting until you can get them on discount just to just to save up you know save some of your your hard-earned money but everybody's different right so that being said you could do a lot worse than than the sea thing sea things an excellent plane I was kind of hesitant before I got it but I figured I would just kind of go all in and I'm really really glad I did again I've set this particular plane up to um, be a dogfighter so to speak or at least be an air fighter I guess I should say um, over a ground fighter and you know just with the way that these bombs are set up um, the bombs add up to 8600 hello come on hover 8600 damage whereas the rockets only do 6000 damage uh, but the difference is I can be at any angle and fire the rockets I don't even have to be right side up and I can fire the rockets I can take two seconds, less than two seconds, to fire all my rockets while I'm still in the middle of a turn fight and then get right back in the turn fight. I can't do that with the bombs. Um, I know, uh, you know, the rockets are more consistent. I know for a fact I can knock out AA with um, a salvo of the four rockets. The bombs, if I accidentally miss one of the bombs, well, there goes, as you know, I just wasted my whole freaking reload time. And last but not least, if it really comes down to it, I can actually use these rockets as air-to-air -air rockets. I've gotten Rocketeer with this particular plane it can be done. Um, but that being said, it's supplementary. Whether they're, you're using the bombs or the rockets is supplementary. Your guns are what's going to make or break this particular plane, your speed, your altitude performance being slightly higher than um, other planes at tier 8. You know, those kind of things are really what's going to going to um, lead you to success with this particular plane. If you enjoy the British multi-roll line, you're going to enjoy this particular plane. It fits right in. Um, it could have been a friggin' tech tree plane for all we know. Um, that's how easily it fits right in to beside Tempest. So um, I hope you enjoyed this review. Do you happen to have your plane set up? If you've got a Sea Fang, do you have it set up just like I've got it set up? Do you have it set up completely different? Do you enjoy the bombs? Um, tell me down in the comments below. Um, are you planning on getting it? Um, I, again, if, if I recommend this plane, but. Um, it's to everybody's discretion on when they get this particular plane. It's a heck of a lot of fun. It's a definitely good credit earner. I started this at like 1.8 million, now I'm at 4.3 million. I played, I don't even know, I, I averaged about 250,000 a match. Uh, of course, that's with a premium account. Um, but it's this definitely earns its silver. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And if. Um, if you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, I understand. Give me a thumbs down. Uh, but either way, give me a comment down below and, and tell me what, uh, what you thought of the video. I'm always trying to learn. And I hope you have a great day.